When College of the Bahamas officials announced proposed fee hikes, students strenuously objected. Now, in fact, students have since gone on a rant about the proposed increases and argue that they are already feeling the financial pinch. But our Andrew Nodes has the other side of the story. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen the fight? Have you seen the suggestions that have come from the stakeholders? Yes, I've and why haven't we gotten? I haven't seen. We haven't seen them as council members. We haven't seen them. COB's council president Alfred says bombarded with questions from a mob of irate college students after he exited a press conference. The students want answers over the recent hike in student fees, which they feel are unjustified. Even more, they're demanding the fees be reversed. But COB's president, Dr. Betsy Vogelbos, today said that while it has been a challenge to face reductions in subventions, much of it is being absorbed by the college. They obviously do not welcome fee increases. I've been on college and university campuses for over 30 years, and I've never seen a fee increase that was welcome or wanted. We are long overdue in having fee increases at the college. Our tuition has been the same since the year 2000. Our fees have remained largely the same during that time, and our subvention has remained largely the same that time, although fluctuating a bit due to the cost of living and the, the size of our enrollment. And if you're wondering how much of a monetary impact the hike would place on the students, Interim VP of Finance Marlo Murphy Brennan breaks it down. For the fall 2013 semester, students will be um, impacted um, to the amount of $70 for the fall semester and for the spring semester by um, in the amount of $170. Now one of the cost saving measures the college intends to implement is not filling vacancies. And while she couldn't provide the number of positions that will remain unfilled, Dr. Bowes assured that it will in no way impact the quality of education. Many of these positions are, are staff positions, some of these are administrative positions, a few of them are faculty positions. Um, so we're going to have to be more efficient in our scheduling, we're going to have to um, look at our small classes and make sure that um, we're offering the classes that need to be offered for our students to graduate in a timely manner and just do that in a better way without sacrificing quality. Among the revenue enhancement measures are increased rental fees, automatic banking machine rental and offering cellular telephone top-up services. This is a challenge. We need not fool ourselves, but it, it, depending on how we respond, it could also be an opportunity for us to shift the paradigm and utilize the resources we have, especially the intellectual resources, so that we can increase the streams of revenue and not be so dependent going forward in the future on government subvention. Now our news team understands that when students attempted to speak with Dr. Bose, they were not successful, and they expressed their disappointment and frustration as they followed the president to our office. COV says despite reports that the students got rowdy, there was no violence or threats of harm to the president. Andrew Knowles, ZNS Network News. The Labor Day holiday is a step closer to being named in honor of Sir Randall Fox. Parliamentarians gave their nod of approval to the bill last evening. Our Cyan Thompson was there. One by one, parliamentarians remembered the life of the father of labor, Sir Randall Fox. Sir Randall Fox is most deserving of his honor. His contribution to the growth and development of labor movement in this country is well documented. Sir Randall Fox has been described as one of the greatest fundamental and visionary leaders of our time. Members like Anglerston and East Grand Bahama stated that values of Sir Randall should be ingrained in the country. Randall Fox looms large in this regard in our political and historical landscape. I am told at one point that he was in fact the most popular personality in this country. It is important, Mr. Speaker, that the values that this one man displayed throughout his political life be preserved and enshrined in our national history, so as to inspire young Bahamians to continue the important work of nation building. In addition to uplifting disenfranchised Bahamians, Sir Randall was a statesman, trade unionist, attorney, sportsman, author, and musician. I think all of us should be grateful for the sacrifices that they made on on behalf of all Bahamians, both black and white alike. They are the people who, Mr. Speaker, contributed to human capital, 
to the development of our people, to the development of our souls. To recognize Sir Randall today, long overdue. Who didn't do it when they did it? It's done. It is here today, Mr. Speaker, that we are recognizing Sir Randall. For the ZNS Network News, I'm Cyan Thompson. Coming up in sports, the Scotiabank High School Track and Field Championships kicking off this morning. And in Family Island news, hear what a Grand Bahama MP has to say about Lewis Yard residents. That's after the break. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it.